Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 Certainly thank God. Amen. I'm going to ask if we would keep in prayer as we go to prayer on this morning. Uh, Jay Anderson, uh, he's okay. Um, his parents have been not feeling well lately, so he's got a lot on his plate. And uh, I had told him some time ago to take whatever time you need. As we all know, when your parents start to age and not feeling well, you want to be there for them. Amen? Amen. And make sure that they're well taken care of. So he's fine, and uh, he just uh, called me this morning. I missed his call, and then he did text me, and I got back to him. So I want to lift him and his family up in prayer, and all of you. And let's just remember all of the things that are happening. Uh, we're just asking God that he would just bless us, strengthen us, and guide us along the way through some of this meandering territory that we're going through. Because if we try to guide ourselves, then we can forget that. That's why I love that song. There's a song that was written. It's called, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Lead me through this barren land. And that's what we need. We need guidance in everything that we do, wherever we are, wherever we go. And we need God to guide us through. Amen? Amen. How many people love Jesus this morning? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Amen. My goodness. That's what I love to hear. I am so happy. I can't tell you, I'm looking forward to the word. This is the last Sunday that we're going to talk about the power of God in this series. I would that there was more time, but we will jump on to another series coming soon. But uh, I really want us to understand that everyone around you, just take a look at the person next to you. Take a look. Amen. I want you to know that whoever you looked at and whoever looked at you, that all of you have the power. Amen. You really do. You have that. You have that. You have that. That's in you. Don't be afraid to use it. Take the hand of the person that's next to you. We're going to God in prayer even on this morning. Amen. Amen. You can come on over and join hands right there. That's fine. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Amen. Father, we thank thee once again for all that you've done. You're so good to us. We thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy for just watching over us and strengthening us. Yes. We thank you for your guidance, dear Lord. And we pray, Father God, that you'll bless Jay and his entire family, dear Lord. Strengthen him even now, Father God, as he takes care of his parents, dear Lord, and all the things that he's they're going through even now. I pray that you would bless his family here even now also, Father God. And then, Lord, I pray that you would be with us, dear Lord, because all of us have challenges and difficulties and things that we're dealing with now. And I pray that you would be with us, dear Lord, and just watch over us, cover us with your blood, and strengthen us. I'm asking, dear Lord, that you'll bless those that may be standing beside the graveside. Bless those, Father God, that are dealing with depression and issues in their life. I pray that you continue to bless Dwayne's mom in a special way. Continue to be with him as he travels back and forth. Strengthen them, dear Lord, and give them everything that they need. But, Lord, we just want to say thank you, dear Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for watching over us and caring for us day by day, hour by hour, second by second, dear Lord. When we don't even think about things ourselves, you're already moving in our lives, and we want to say thank you. Lord, we ask, Father God, now, dear Lord, that your love not only will shower over us, but come through us and spread throughout to others who don't know who you are. And may we not have anybody in this world that we hate. May we not have anybody in this world that we have not or will not forgive. But may we always remember the scripture that said that lets us know that if we don't forgive, you can't forgive us. So we pray to the Lord that we forgive, that we can be forgiven, that your word can go out and not come back void, that we share it with those that they can become empowered and strengthened and realize that they too are saved, that no matter what their track record was, dear Lord, in life, once we repent and receive you, you erase all of that. And you give us a new life, new standing, new hope, dear Lord. And we pray for that hope in all of us, dear Lord. If it's not there, I pray, dear Lord, by the end of the day, that that hope will now be instilled and you will understand and know, dear Lord, that you love us so much that you waived our past. In other words, you allowed it to bypass us, that never to be brought up to us again, dear Lord. And you said that once I do that, you've forgiven us. So because you've forgiven us, dear Lord, I pray that you empower us that we can begin to heal and forgive ourselves. And once we do that, dear Lord, that we can now feel empowered to go out and share your word with others who don't know who you are and not be ashamed of who I was, but be thankful for who I am. I ask now, dear Lord, that you will bless all of us and be with us even during this sermon that we can walk out, dear Lord, and know through this whole service that wasn't it good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. These are all blessings we thank you for, and we ask in Jesus' name and for his name's sake, and together let all of us say amen. Let's give God some real praise this morning. All right. Come on now. Let's give him real praise. Amen. 
Amen. I don't want to tell you this, but you can be seated. I want this to keep going. Amen. voices and turn to page 321 in our hymnals. And I know everybody could sing here. Because this, listen, Dorothy, uh, I love Dorothy Claproth. She loves to play, so it wouldn't hurt me to say keep on playing until everybody sings. <laughs> and then, so if we would just rise to our feet, page 321 in our blue hymn books, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. Wow. 
promise to receive us, poor and sinful though we be. Thou hast mercy to relieve us, grace to cleanse and power to free. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to Thee. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to Thee. Early let us seek Thy favor, early let us to Thy will. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast loved us, love us still. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> I love you too, Lisa. Today is Sunday, May 28, 2017. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to everyone who is joining us today. Whether you are visiting us today, I hope you come back again. Or if you're here, it's good to see you all. Directly after church service, there will be Sunday school for adults, children, and teens this afternoon. Amen. Wednesday, May 31st at 7 p.m., there will be Bible study. Amen. On Sunday, June 3rd, there will be men's fellowship at 8.30, followed by youth fellowship at 10, and choir practice at 10 a.m. Amen. Amen. Full schedule. I'd like to wish a happy birthday to Maya Anon today. I hope I can answer that. Happy birthday. Please always remember to keep our sick and shut-ins lifted up in prayer. Their names are in our bulletin. Um, I'm sure if they could be here, they would be here to worship with us and just have a blessed Sunday like we are all blessed with today. Um, please always remember to check out our church website, www.fbcpittston.com, for any updates and announcements and church functions. We are also on Facebook and Twitter. Um, our Twitter is at First Baptist Church 18640. And our services are live. So if you can't be here, you can always catch it online. That's pretty awesome, I think. Um, on June 25th, 2017, from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m., we will have our community outreach picnic. For those of us who do not know what this is, it's a time where our church can give back to the community. We um, set up a big grill, and we have hot dogs and hamburgers and all these pasta salads and desserts and all the fixings that you would want for a picnic. Um, we will have it on the 25th, like I said, from 12 to 3. Um, all I ask, there is a sign-up sheet in the back for anybody who would like to bring pasta salad or potato salad or macaroni salad. And as always, volunteers are much needed and welcome. It's just a good time for all of us to fellowship and spread the word to our community that God loves us and that he saves and that he is always there for us. So I hope to see you all there. Are there any other announcements? No? Well, have a blessed Sunday. Thank you. Amen. 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 Let the church say amen. 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 We're certainly looking forward to the uh, community picnic, and that really, we just need everybody's help. I know uh, Amanda could use help on her committee. 
even now. We are so blessed. Uh, I want to tell you how, that we're not fortunate, we're blessed. We are given food probably, I want to say every other week, you'll see uh, food lining the uh, back area of the church um, out where the uh, kitchen is. Uh, where people are coming and just bringing food. Someone that I have been blessed to know uh, simply asked me one day, could we use the food? And I said, yes. She said, you want me to continue to bring it? I said, please, because there are people that are in need. The only thing that I would ask is because they are really um, are just, um, their hands are tied. They don't have a lot of people on their committee, and this is uh, the committee that Miss Amanda is on is that if you see the food there, that you would just leave it there and let them put it away and deal with it. And if there's someone in need, let them know and then they'll give it to you. This way, we can have a running tally on what we have and that way we can make sure that everybody that's in need can get, amen? If you could do that, that would just help us out a lot. I would rather it just let them deal with it, let them put it away. And then if we are, there are people that are in need, we're going to begin to put together, and she already has, uh, where there will be giveaways more now probably because there are so much food. Uh, so we want to make sure that we have what we need to give it to people that truly need it first in here and then out there. Amen? So we're going to start home first. Amen? And so we're asking that you would please govern yourselves accordingly. Um, our men's fellowship. Men, you know what God called us to be. I, I, I can't beg you. I'm just telling you. Saturday mornings, 8.30 to 9.30. If you're awake and you can make it here, come on out, join us, and let's share the word of God with each other, amen? amen. And, let's, and, and it's 8.30 to 9.30, trust me, we're out of here because Saturday's Saturday and we all have things that we want to do, um, but we don't rush through it. We truly love God, and so I'm asking you to come on out, join with us. We have some things on the docket as, that we're going to be doing together. We're going to be going some places together as men, and we're going to just enjoy this summer, not just indoors, but outside, where we can have a good time in Jesus together. Amen? Amen. It's been a long time coming, and we're going to start that this year for sure, and I'm looking forward to it. So I'm asking all of you that can make it, come on out and uh, be a part of this men's fellowship that we can kind of uh, begin to grow together. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm asking you to keep those names. There are some people that are here today that are on the sick and shut-in list. Ben, it's good to see you. Amen. It's glad to sit, glad to have you here today with us. Amen. And we're asking all of you, and I see some other names on there, and Emma, we are, Emma, you don't even know. Uh, I was going to start, the, I was going to send the FBI, the CIA. We were coming looking for you, but I'm glad to see you. Seriously, I'm glad to see you back, and we thank God for you. Uh, keep Barbara Bryan, Iva Coyle, uh, Tony and Gert. Uh, Marianne, it's so good to see you today. Marianne, back. And uh, also, I see uh, Joanne Colasar, her name is still on here. If we would keep her in prayer also. And Dorothy Miller, whose name. Amen. 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 Her name's not on here anymore, though, because it don't need to be, because God healed her already. Amen? All right. That's why I didn't call it. Amen. I'm going to uh, ask that you keep a young man by the name of Mark in prayer who will be traveling to Richmond, Virginia, leaving this area for a new job. Amen? And we're at Tim's friend. I'm just asking that you would keep him in your prayer. And right here in the front of the choir... To your left, this young lady was not feeling well at all. She was sick, and she was out for last Sunday, right? Am I correct? And a couple other Sundays, she was coughing up probably, I think, for 48 hours, not feeling well. But God blessed her and allowed her to be back with us today. We are so happy that you are back with us. Amen? Amen. 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 I think that is it. I'm asking all of you to keep all the... Uh, all things in prayer. Uh, we are, as a church, uh, working on a couple of things here. They will be here prayerfully shortly to do the lighting for us. Um, so it won't feel as dark in here as it does sometimes. 
Uh, they will be working upstairs. They will be working on every light downstairs. And it will save us financially because they will be the new lighting. Amen? Amen. And, uh, and I attribute that, first of all, to God, but God blessing you and then you blessing us in turn, that we can take and use that money frugally to spend it the way that God wants us to in this building so that we are doing that which we are supposed to be. Amen? Amen. 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 I want you to know we don't play with your money. No, we put it to good use. And I want you to know we have some people around here who will make sure that the work gets done. I, they're here every time I turn around. They're, I guess, you know, there's always Batman and Robin, the dynamic duo. They knew who I'm talking about. He turned his head on me already. Ben and Charles. Not Ben and Jerry, but Ben and Charles. They're always here trying to make sure that things are done. If there's work being done, they're making sure that work is getting done. So I appreciate that and all of the trustees and everything that they are doing. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's now time for our uh, tithes and our offerings and also our building fund as we continue to do the things for the building. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father, we thank thee once again for all that you've done. We pray, dear Lord, that you'll bless this offering, bless the gift and the giver, that this offering may be used for the very purpose it was taken. These and all blessings we thank you for, we love you for, and we do ask in Jesus' name and for his name's sake. And together, let all of us say, Amen. Amen. If we will turn, I believe, in our blue hymn books, uh, to page 257, the Savior is waiting, amen? 
And let me hear those wonderful voices one more time, or else my friend Dorothy will play forever. Come on, somebody say amen. Let's sing like we love God. Come on. 257. Amen. 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 If you will remain standing and turn with me to Acts, we'll be dealing with the last particular portion of this uh, series. Acts chapter 3, verse number 6. Acts chapter number 3 and verse number 6. when you have it, if you would say amen. 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 Acts chapter number three amen. and verse number six. Amen. And while we're here, I want to just make, remind us that we're going to keep praying for Reverend Sharon Brittingham, who has not been well. Amen. 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 And she's on the mend, and I want you all to keep her in prayer. Amen. Acts chapter three and verse six reads this way. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Father, we thank thee once again for all that you've done, even all that you're going to do. I pray now, dear Lord, that you hide this, your servant, behind the cross, that your word may come forth, that someone might come crying, what must there to be saved, and that we would have the answer through your word. These and all blessings we thank you for, and we ask in Jesus' name and for his name's sake. And together let all of us say, amen. amen, amen. I want to talk to you this morning about the power in you, the power in you. Whenever we start talking about the church as a whole, about power, uh, people uh, get nervous about it because then it goes to from that to, well, what doctrine are you talking about? And uh, what faith are you talking about? Who are you? What else do you teach? What do you believe and what do you not believe? And let me just say it this way here. Again, I go back to the song that Dr. King loved. In Christ there is no east nor west. In him no south nor north, but one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide earth. You, you want to know doctrine? Here's what it is. It's, it's biblical. That's what it is. It's not Baptist. It's not Protestant. It's, it's biblical doctrine, sound-based. They're talking about the power of God. And, and I want you to understand before anybody goes home and gets on the phone line, nobody called pastor and got mad, said anything to him. I'm just sharing this with you and to those that are listening to us live, 
that sometimes we get so caught up in doctrine until we forget totally why we're here. And that is we're here to worship and praise the Lord, to love God, amen, with all our hearts, and then to want to go out and share God's word with others who don't know him. Amen. Amen. So I want to talk about the power in you, the power in you. Three particular points. The first is the lame man. The first part is the lame man. Number two, Peter and John. Peter and John. And number three, the healing. The healing. Number one, the lame man. Number two, Peter and John. And number three, the healing. And I want to talk about the power in you. One of the most famous commercials that we hear or see these days, and it would make young children and uh, teens, adults, go out and want to purchase cases of it. And they talked about, is it in you? And it was Gatorade. Gatorade started out in a bottle, and it was not even lime green. It looked like something you didn't want to drink. If you played on a football team, baseball team, or anything back in the 70s, the coach would just take it, pour the packets of Gatorade in one of those big jugs that we use for the picnic. Our coach, one of the assistants, did this. And if you were thirsty enough, you'd drink it. And he would take his fist, stir it around like this here, and have at it. And this was after tossing the chew that was in his mouth. <laughs> Come on, somebody say amen. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. We used powder, uh, foot powder, and there was a bin in the school where they'd have a long thing, and there was a bench on each side. And you'd put your feet where everybody else put their feet. And it was what they did. And if you were in seventh grade, because back then there was no split, if you were in seventh grade or if you were a senior, you practiced together. So when it came time for some of the exercises or things that they would do, bull in the ring, bull in the ring was something where one person would stand in the center, and you might as well just say the whole team surrounded you in a circle. And they'd call your name or your number, and you'd hit the person in the middle. You just had to turn and be ready for them. Amen. Amen. And usually it was those that were freshmen that they keep saying, you, you, you're next. And I, no, I already did it. You're next. You're a freshman. When it came time for drinks, they'd blow the whistle. On the hop would be the word. You'd run toward the hose. By the time you got up to the hose, they'd cut it off, say, get back in line. It's time to practice again. All for this whole thing called Gatorade. You couldn't wait to get it. You were thirsty. I don't know about now, but August was hot. I mean, we were talking like 90, 95 degrees. I mean, you're sweating. You lose weight just standing on the field, even if you didn't play. You couldn't wait to get in the shed or go home. And just, you'd fall asleep, wake up, and it's time to go back to rehearsal because there were double sessions. And if you weren't there, you didn't play and you weren't on the team. It's not like today. But the power I want to talk about today is not in a drink. God gave it to the Son. He gave it to us. Amen. And that power is in you today. And I don't know if you believe it or not, but when you leave here, I want you to know you have that power. Amen. It's something that sometimes we look at and say, well, it's not far-fetched. I believe it because it's in the Word, but I don't believe that I can do it. You can do whatever God wants you to do. Because God has already put in you to be able to do those things. It's about when it's time to be birthed or fulfilled. And God will bless you to make sure that you are not only ready, but that you are taking care and doing what he wants so that those that are near and around you that he wants to be blessed will be blessed because of you, because you're doing what God wants you to do. So if you can see this, you are an important cog in the wheel in that God is using you that you might bless others. So when you or others say you don't have in you the power that God has given you, it's dismissive because you do have it. You may not want to use it. You might be a little afraid, but you have it in you. 
I remember when we, we couldn't wait to drive. And when uh, they would take us to drive, you would have to go to the state police barracks in Wyoming for your license. And I remember my uncle taking me over there and once I got to the barracks, they called us out and by name or a number and you go out to the car, they had the cone set up and you had to know what you were doing. The trooper who was in the car with me didn't say two words, but just uh, and wrote stuff down on the paper, put his feet up on the dash, and I got nervous because I said, if my uncle ever saw this. <laughs> so we're driving, and he's at parallel park. Slow down. Pull over there right now. Go through these cones 10 miles an hour. Don't put your foot on the brake. When you get to the thing, park and just stop the car. Don't say a word. I'll let you know if you passed or failed. That was it. Now, that didn't make you nervous not to want to take the test. Nothing will. By the time it was all over, there was dead silence for about five minutes. I mean, you just, all you heard was, he just filled the paperwork out. I'm thinking, did I pass? Didn't call my name. All he said was he ripped the piece of paper out, said, here, you have 30 days to go to such and such and fill out the paperwork, send it in, and then you will have your license. If you don't fill it out, you won't have your license. Do you understand? I thought I was in the military. Yes, sir. Because <laughs> they, they, they had what you needed. And either you were inclined to listen to the instruction and follow it and receive it, or you weren't. You get mad if you wanted to, but if you did, you weren't going to get your license that day. And what I'm telling you is God has given the power that is packed with everything we need. Think about it as the nutrients that you need. Blueberries are antioxidants, all of those things that you need. People make smoothies these days because they believe by reading that, hey, we can be more you know, lively and we can smile and we can be healthier. It's all the things that are in there, but imagine everything that God has in him, the power to love, to save, to give. And now he's saying, I'm going to give this to you because I want you to be able to talk to people, to heal people, to pray for people. Come on, somebody. To give people what they need. And I'm giving you this so that you can share with them. I'm not there, but I'm in you. And I want you to share with others that others may know. This lame man was at the gate called beautiful. Think about that. He was there at the temple, and you have to remember this here. He was lame since birth, troubling because the only thing he knew was to beg for alms. That's what he knew. That was his duty. That was his job. Couldn't walk, couldn't move. Matter of fact, they picked him up every day, carried him to the same spot, and sat him there. And he was there begging for alms. Because it's something that he understood that that was going to get him through life. But I want you to put yourself in his place. And my question to you this morning would be, do you aspire to be more than you are right now? Do you aspire to understand more about Jesus day by day? Do you aspire to want to love people more than you love them right now? And then my last question is, and you don't have to answer this one if you don't want to, but do you aspire to forgive those that haven't forgiven you? This, this particular man, I want to share these three things with you. This man had no incentive for goals that would be set higher for himself. Because all he knew is, I was lame since birth. This is all I know. This is the only place I'll ever go. And this is all that I'll ever do. It's pretty sad, isn't it? Even in the school system today, with young people that are mentally challenged, if you don't go and fight for your child, nobody will. There they sat in the class, just passing them from grade to grade to grade. And before you know it, they're out, and they have no idea how to read, write, or anything else. We as parents have to what? Stay up on that, make sure. And it's funny because our young people think, you're just being too hard on me. But I go to thinking, if my mom wasn't hard on me, I wouldn't be able to read. I wouldn't be able to write. Come on, somebody. I wouldn't be able to do anything because we, don't, we didn't want to do anything. But when they challenged us, and I mean, when I say challenged, I mean told us that if you didn't do it, these are the things that will happen to you. It made us 
like the football coach said, on the hop. Get over there, sit down, do your homework, read, write. And when I think about it, my mom would often say, you don't have to do anything, she said. All you have to do is go to school every day, do your homework. You have a free meal, you have a free room and board. She said, your clothes are washed, you don't do anything. She said, and all we're asking you to do is your homework and to get passing grades, and you want to look at us like you don't want to do that. She said, you better change your mind. And I think that challenges all of us. My question is, God is looking at us and saying, isn't there more that you want to do? Are you just satisfied with where you are right now? Don't you want the power that I've given you? Don't you want to utilize it and share it with others who don't know who I am? That's why you have it, so you can go out and let the world know, because you're on fire. I need you to set others on fire. Then they'll set others on fire. Then they'll want to know, well, who is it that you know? You just tell them, I know a man by the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And he changed my life when he came into it. Somebody ought to say amen. He, listen, this man made enough money begging for all. He did. He didn't have incentive to want to move, to want to do anything. He was satisfied. He seemed to have everything that he could need or so he thought. Whenever you're satisfied with where you're at, simply means you have no set goals and you don't know anything beyond where you are. And that's why I share with everyone, if you ever get a chance, leave this area, go out and explore. When you, when you cross the state lines into Jersey and the New York and the Philadelphia, ain't, ain't nobody running. If they don't know you, you don't know them. They ain't looking to harm you. And just enjoy yourself. Figure it out. Find out how to get places. Eat somewhere you've never eaten before. And just share with people because it diversifies you to a point where now I don't want to be where I am at anymore. I aspire to be higher than I am. I want to go further. I want more for myself. And that's what Jesus wants to know. Do you really want more for yourself? Because if you want more, he has more. He wants to give you so much to we'll be spilling over, sharing it with others that we can't even contain it ourselves anymore. I'm, I'm not satisfied. Whether you believe it or not, this day would not only change the lame man's life, but it would change the lives of those that are getting ready to come into his life. Amen. See, you don't understand that there are times that God has you in certain places that you could change the lives of others who don't know who he is. Amen. Amen. Just by simply being there and talking and being kind. My dad said, often said, it doesn't cost you anything to smile or say a kind word. Amen. We were out of town yesterday. We were just sitting in a restaurant enjoying it and just sitting there talking man came up with his wife sat down at the table talked to us like he knew us for 50 years i'm laughing and talking with him he said man he said are you getting ready to go i said yeah i said but i wish i didn't have to i wish you were here when we got here because i'm laughing right now we may have never eaten and he just began to just talk and share with us and i'm saying to myself, if people could only see that because there are good people all over the world. You just got to be able to encounter them and know that they, they are loving, they care, and they are willing to share and help you if you need. But it's about where are you and what do you want for yourself? I don't know about you, but like at home, I always want seconds and thirds, and if there's more, I want that. In Christ, I want the same thing. I just want to keep getting more and more. Number two, Peter and John. Peter and John made their way to the temple. And they made their way to the temple, and this, this lame man didn't know them. But what he did was he simply asked alms of them because to him, it was like anybody else going to the temple. Didn't know their names, didn't know who they were probably didn't know what they didn't like. His only concern was, I'm going to ask you for alms, and my prayer is you give it to me. And that's it. Imagine going through life and just knowing people by their faces, but not knowing who they are. Amen. Not even talking about their names, but intimately, who are they? What, what do they do? What are they about? And that's because you decided long ago, here's as far as my relationship will go with you. I'm going to go right here 
And this is the line of demarcation, the Mason-Dixon line. I'm not going over it. We'll we leave it right there. Anything other than that, you might as well go backwards because you're not getting that. And God wants us, there are some of us that are here today, that we have had some things that have happened to us in life to where we can't seem to have any type of relationship at all because of the pain that we've suffered in relationships. And God is saying that whatever relationships you came out of, that's not the end all. Because sometimes you have to go through some rough times in order to go through some good times. Because how could you know what you want if you don't know what you don't want? And when you find out what you don't want, then you know what you want. And God is saying, now what you want may not be what you need, but I have what you need. Oh, it's come to me. And I'll give you what you need. I'll open the door for you, but we have to be humble enough and be ready and willing to pray and then hear from God about what God is sharing with us. We run around so upset, so hurt, spending all of our time upset about our past relationships, the things that have happened to us. We'd be so much further. Why did this not work out? Because maybe that's not what God intended for you. Maybe God wanted something else for you. And sometimes when you look back, you got to realize, look what happened to me. Look where I ended up. But my question to you would be this here. If that didn't happen to you, would it happen to you? How much further back would you be? God is letting us know that there are things that he has for us. It's about us seeking those things, seeking God, asking God what are they, and letting God give those things to us. Because whatever God has for us is not only good to us, but it's good for us. It's something that we need. They're, they're here. Peter and John. Remember the lame man didn't care who they were because he didn't know them. Again, his only concern was asking for all. Peter gave him a hard stare. You know, like one of those hard stares because you just had a bad day. And you go to looking at somebody like this here, and they just go to walking away like, I just asked you where the direct, for directions. You didn't have to look at me like that. They go to walking away. Peter gave him that hard stare. But his stare wasn't out of anger. His stare was when he asked for alms, Peter knew then, I've got something else for you. The lame man didn't know. He's just thinking, well, he's going to tell me he's not going to give me anything at all. Here's, what, here's the issue, and here's how great this is. The lame man was asking for alms. Peter said, listen, I got better than that for you because what you're looking for will only last just a while. But what I'm getting ready to give you, this is going to be eternally. He said, so you're asking me for one thing because that's all you know about is alms. But I'm going to give you what you're not asking for because what I'm giving you is what you need right now. And that's what he wanted him to know. He was simply saying, I'm looking for alms. Peter said, I got something different for you. Peter was telling those who were looking for something monetary from them that we don't have anything for you. We don't have what you want, but we have what you need. Read this here. It talks about Peter not telling him, but it says telling them. Read the word. Which means it was more than him there, but our eyes are on him because that's who we're dealing with right now. He wanted him to understand and others around him. You're looking for monetary. You know that you go to the store right now. You just got paid. I don't care whether you buy organic or non-organic. Go to Wegmans, Weiss, go wherever you want. I will sit out in my car, wait 20 minutes, and know by the time you come out of that store, you walk in smiling, but you left like you was in pain. Because when you go to the cash register, you give them money, and then you give them knowingly you give them those coupons that have expired, thinking that, well, it's, lo it's logical. One might go through, but the computers are so good now, soon they say, beep, beep. oh, this is no good. I heard people in, uh, in the line literally arguing, I know it's good. I just gave that to you, ma'am. I know it's good. Ma'am, I'm sorry. It's not. It's outdated. I mean, I, I would go to another line because they're going to be there arguing all day long. And so literally you come out, your mouth is dropped because whatever you took in there, you didn't come out with. Because what they did is said, give me your money in exchange for these goods. And so whatever you came out with, you were lighter 
in your pocket. And now you're mad, so when everybody at your house goes for the refrigerator, you got something to say. You're running around here wasting water, soda, and food. You don't even care. You ain't working nowhere. Come on, somebody say amen. I know it because I see your faces right now. I'm looking right at you. Every time I turn around, refrigerator door open and costing us electricity. Orange is laying around. You got soda laying around. Run outside somewhere and play around. But we drop because it's what we do. But God is saying, guess what? You don't have to do that anymore because what I'm getting ready to give you will change your life for the good forever. Amen. And that's because the power that you're getting ready to have is not only going to help you, but you're going to bless others with what I've given you that you can share it with them. Don't become braggadocious where you say it's all about you because it's not about you. See, before we came to Christ, we were selfish. It was about us. Amen. Amen. But now that we came to Christ, it's not about us, but it's all about him. Amen. He wanted them to know there's something different now, something I'm getting ready to share with you that you're going to have that's going to take you completely over the top. Can you imagine being the lame man and, and he's just looking at you, gave you that hard stare, and he's letting you know that what you're asking for is not what you need? I, I can't even only imagine in his mind, if you've been lame since birth, well, in, in his mind, he, he's not saying it, but he's just thinking it. What do you mean? I don't need this. I, how do you think I'm going to survive? This is all I do all day long. I can't go anywhere. I can't do anything. Think about that. And young people, that's why your parents tell you about school all the time. You think they're arguing with you, but they're setting you up not for failure, but they're setting you up to succeed in life. That's what they're doing. Not setting you up to fail. They want you to succeed. But mom, you don't understand anything. You don't understand. I want to play with my friends. And I'm, I'm laughing now because I, I hear some of my friends, you know, Johnny and Mary and Joey and all them, right? They talk about now, I wish I was the nerd when I was in school because I would be where he's at right now. He's working, in the, he's working down on Wall Street right now and I'm here because there's a difference. It's about getting your head in the game, learning, understanding. I don't care where you go to school. I don't care what your degree is in. The only thing they want to know is when you have that cap and gown on and you go for that interview is you got that piece of paper. And when you give them that piece of paper, that lets them know that he or she can think critically, understand, they can write, they can declare, they can share, they can work, they know. That's what that's all about. It's not, you know, some people sometimes they go out and, and it's okay to do this because there are some places you walk into, you might have it. But whether your degree is from Harvard or Wilkes, whether it's from Stanford, Penn State, whether it's from Pitt, or whether it's from Dillard, whether it, it, it doesn't make, whether it's from Morehouse, it doesn't make a difference. It's you have that piece of paper that you'll be able to walk across that line and say, the first question is, uh, do you first of all have your high school education? Because nowadays you can't get in, you can't even fill out an application without having that. And number two, do you have your diploma? Yes, I do. And you give it to them, now we can talk. But my next question is, if someone asked you this question, would you be able to answer it? What is your self-worth? Pastor, what are you talking about? What are you worth? So if they, you know, that's one of the questions you don't even think about because all you do is you walk in and you want them to give you an offer of what they're going to give you. What if they say, well, we're not offering you anything. Tell me what you're worth. Do you know what you're worth? Are you able to tell them what you're worth? And that's why I'm saying just being in this area, is it letting you know what you're worth or would you know, listen, I know what they're paying around here, but I'm worth far more than that. Because what are you worth, number one, in Christ Jesus? You are empowered to share his word with others who don't know who he is. And then when you're in the marketplace for a job, what is your worth? Monetarily, your self-worth. When you walk to the table right there, are you ready to tell them not only when you hand that piece of paper down, you lay down your resume, I'm worth $100,000. And I hear laughter. And that's exactly what they'll do. They'll laugh at you if you don't come in there serious. This is what I'm worth. Amen. Now, if they want to start shaving it down after that, fine. But I got a number that if you go too low, I don't want it. 
You have to be ready. This is what God wants us to know. I blessed you with everything you need. Do not go out there half-heartedly share my word and walk away and it does nothing because you've given nothing. But when you give your all and you share my word, it lets others know not only am I real, but everything you're talking about, they're ready to receive. And that's what God wants us to know. If you come half-heartedly, you can't share nothing. But you've got to come with all the power that God has given you to share with others, that others know who you are. It's strange when we talk about God's word. I, I, I have to say this here. You know, when we played football, the, the first thing that you knew, you, you got to protect yourself. And you always wanted someone big in front of you. And you, if you were the running back, jumping over uh, the, the bags, because you'd be doing this, the linebacker, he just staring, he's seething. It just water dripping off his face. He's looking for you because you go through the chutes, you have nowhere to run. You can't jump this way, this way. You got a quarter inch on each side of your lineman to run. And he's just waiting there for, to hit you. All he does is grabs the guy, throws him, he's looking to nail you. So you hope for the guy, the biggest guy in front of you, you push him all the way through, and then you jump and keep on running. And hope you don't have to come through the line again. It's your turn again, back in line. And you got to keep doing it. But my thing is this year, why do we want to keep going through cycles in life like that? When God is letting us know exactly what we need to do, why do we want to keep going in another direction, doing things that get us nowhere? I want to go places in Christ Jesus. I want to go higher. I want to experience things in Christ that I've never experienced before. Because what God has to, for me to share with others, I want to know what they are because I want to be able to smile with joy every day. Despite what I might feel inside, I want the joy of Jesus in my life. That's what I need every day. Let me talk about this last part. The healing. He invoked, Peter did, the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and told the man, this lame man, to not only rise, but he did something even better. He told him to walk. Amen. See, when you're empowered by Jesus, you don't just go that one step, you go all the way. Because when God has something for us, no man can take that from us. Amen. And, and so, can you imagine this lame man since birth never walked? And someone is telling you, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, not only to rise up, but to walk. I can't even imagine the look on his face. But because he said, I came for alms. And you're giving me a healing. Amen. I came for alms, and you're giving me Jesus Christ. Amen. I came that my life would pretty much be the same because all I'm doing is asking for alms, and people bring me from place to from where I am right to the gate every day. And you're giving me something that I've never even asked for. I never aspired because the only thing I knew is that I was lame. Amen. And that's what I want to share with you this morning. If the only thing you know is this, that's all you aspire to be because that's all you know. But when you begin to break the barrier and the door open and say, Lord, show me what you want me to be and who you want me to be. Watch God begin to inject things in you that you never thought about before. And when he does, you don't have to worry about anybody opening the door for you. God will. You don't have to worry about nothing. God will open every door you need open. Everything. Because God can. And God will. All this, all that was lame about this man began to receive strength, feet, legs, everything that was lame, couldn't move. They're receiving strength. He's standing. He walked into the temple with Peter and John leaping and praising God. And if you can imagine him, he's jumping up for joy. And the people that see him... Ain't that Johnny that was sitting out the gate for about 20 years, begging for alms? That can't be him. Is that him? He's jumping up praising God. Because what he realized is, I asked for alms, but he gave me a healing. What is that? It's new life. It's new hope. Because now I'm no longer running for alms. I'm running for Jesus. It's changed who I am. 
It's given me a new perspective and it's helped me to understand I don't ever want to go back to where I was because that's all I knew. But now that God has opened up the door for me, I aspire to be more than where I am because notice this, when he was healed, he didn't stay where he was. He jumped up and started leaping, praising God. He moved from where he was because he said, I don't want to no longer stay in just this place. I want to run and tell somebody that Jesus saved. Come on, somebody. There's a difference. When you have that power in you, you don't want to stay still. You don't just want to be quiet. You want to share with someone. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. That's why I remind myself of when we're back home. I'll never forget it. And old folk used to get happy. They'd just be tumbled around on the benches. And as kids, we'd run up to them and get ready to say, are you okay? And all we would feel is somebody snatching us back. They're all right, sit down. They're all right. It's just God. I'm telling you, I witnessed, I mean, head hitting the bench. When they got up, nothing happened. They just sat back down again. Because it was nothing but the Holy Ghost. And it stirred something up in them, and they remind, and they were reminded of how good God's been to them and how he's blessed them. That's what I'm talking about. That's not cultural. I'm going to say it again. That's not cultural. That's not difference in religion. That's just God. That's what I want us to understand. It's not about culture. There's no divide. It's not about religion. That's God. That means if God is doing something with you differently than me, it's not that I'm any better than you, but you are where God wants you to be, and I'm trying to aspire to get to where he wants me to be. But I'm not upset at you. I'm not ashamed. If you want to jump and shout and say, Lord, I just want to thank you, go on and do it, because that's God. It's that power, the power of God that he's put in us. Peter and John with this lame man. Here they stood at Solomon's porch, and they ran together unto them on the porch, wondering what, what, what happened to this man. Can you imagine the, all, all they ever knew was seeing every day they walked in, this man laying at the gate. And whoever gave him alms gave him alms. But if you think about it, none of them helped him. Because if you give them alms, you pretty much just say, well, stay where you're at because this is about as far as you're going. I'll give you when I can, but that's it. None of them decide, none of them helped him out. Hey, do you need a ride? I have a job over here. If you can do this, I'll give you a pet. None of them. But it's not until Peter and John came to town and spoke into him what Christ wanted him to, that it changed their lives forever because it wasn't just the lame man but it was those that were around him because others saw what happened that day and how he changed their lives and can, I got to ask you this question if it changed this lame man's life and I was there and I witnessed it the first thing I do is Lord change me <laughs> I go to run and I say if you're still here change me whatever it needs to be See, we look at being lame from birth as just, I can't move. But sometimes we have issues that cause us to be lame from birth that we can't move from. Ah, uh, I'm home. Let me hit this right now. I got a little bit more time. We, see, what we, what we realize is this here. Well, I only did this in high school, so I can't go any further because this is all my teachers said that I would ever be. So I'm just happy to be where I am. Not so. That's being lame because you're just sitting on the aisle and they want you to sit on. But I thought I'd stop by to let you know, whatever they said, that's not, see, the only one that speaks into my life is Jesus Christ. When he speaks, because he's got the power to speak into my life. And he wants us to know, don't rest your laurels on what others say because others don't have what I have. And that's the power to speak life and death. Why do we sit and I got to say this, I'm going to hit home with someone today. Amen. For years, we're thinking about what people told us and that way we can't go anywhere, we can't do anything. I can care less about what people say. I don't care what they say. If you're 30 years old, well, how am I ever going to go back to school online? Well, I don't even have my high school education. Get it online. Well, how can I ever go back to school? I'll never be able to learn and study. Try it. 
Pray, ask God. He'll open doors for you. Well, I'll never be able to do this because I was never supposed to make it right. But guess what? Who said that to you? Now let God speak into your life and go on and do something about it. Well, my relationships, everything that I've ever had always seems to break up right. But who said that about you? Well, now let God come into your life and let God speak into your life. Is there anybody here that came from bad relationships? Now you got a good one and don't want that good one to go away. Somebody ought to say amen. What are we worrying about? Let that stuff go. Let all those issues go. It's time that we step forward into where God wants us to be. And remind, the only time you look back at, is you look back and smile, thank God I ain't there no more. See, if I look back, I got common sense. I'm going to look and keep on walking like this here. Bad hip at all, Dwayne. I'm going to walk. Because I realize I've got to go. I don't want to get caught back where I was. I want to keep walking where God wants me to walk to. States happened this week in Shippensburg. My son happened to be able to go down to it. And they went, man, during one of the relays, uh, crossed the line with his foot before he had the baton. Devastating. Because if you're a senior, that's your last time there. He said a young man got down on the ground, was crying, and one of the kids from the team, J.R., asked him, what's, what's wrong with him? He said, he's probably a senior. Probably the last time he'll be here. And he said he dropped the baton, or didn't get the baton, didn't cross the line like he should have, and have that baton in his hand. There are ups and downs that were, to all my young people, whether you're graduating high school or going to college, there are ups and downs you're going to have in life. Sometimes you pass the test. Sometimes you just get by. Sometimes you don't get it. But it doesn't mean, when they say failure, did I fail the test? Yes, I did. But am I a failure? Absolutely not. That means I got to go back to the drawing board, study harder, come on, somebody, and get what I didn't get the first time so this way I can really get it. It's, it's, it's applicable to all of us, but that's what God wants us to be. Stop living in your past. Things happen for a reason. W would I to God that some of the things that have happened to me never happened? Absolutely. But as I stand here today talking to you, I can't help but say, Lord, thank you, because if they hadn't happened to me, I wouldn't be where I am today. And sometimes that's what pushes us forward and propels us where God wants us to be. It's not strange. Here they are on the porch. I'm done. And they're wondering. It, that's, it, it says that. Read it in your word. When you get home today, I want you to read it. They're wondering about because they're wondering. They, they approach Solomon's porch and they get there. And when they approach it, it wasn't our power or our holiness that made this man to walk. That's what Peter said. Wasn't my power, wasn't our holiness, it's what who gave us, it's what God gave us. I couldn't do it on my own, but when God gave it to us, that's why when Jesus left, he said, I'm going to leave you with something you're going to need. And when he left it with them, it wasn't just the apostles or the disciples, it was for all of us that we could have what we need. In other words, I need someone in me, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost in me, so when I need to understand, it's there. When I need to be comforted, he's there. When I need to be taught, he's there. When I need power, he's there. When I need to be above the fray, he's there. When I'm walking and don't know what's behind me, he's there. Jesus is the light of the world, the salt of the earth. Somebody ought to say amen. My God. It's what he is. It was the power of God given unto us. Amen. Let me read this and I'm done. Verse 12, and when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? As though by our own power or holiness, we had made this man to walk. They didn't do it. it. Wasn't them. But it was the power in them. And that power that's in them, Ben, God gave it to us. When I go to the doctors, you go to the doctors, you don't want bad news, you want good news. 
But I declare whatever you hear, my, I have enough hope in Christ stabilized enough that whatever I hear, I know God's going to allow me to come through. Amen. Whatever it is, I know that he's, he is faithful to allow us and to bless us and to give us what we need. But what we can't do is just sit idle and say, woe is me, and watch life just pass us by, always walking around in fear, always mad at somebody, always upset. You missing life. Amen. You can't even smell the pizza or the flowers because you're so angry, you're walking by it every day. Amen. God got the love of your life standing in your face. You're so angry, you're walking by. You keep praying to God, send me somebody. He sent them to you a hundred times, but you're so angry, you walk by them a hundred times. You asking God for a job. Lord, I need a job. You know, I asked for a job. He got the job for you. You so mad, you walking by the place every day. Ain't nobody want to hire me. That's the very place you walking by. God wants us to finally settle and just put everything that we have out there and let him deal with us step by step. Because I'm not where he wants me to be. So God's still working on me to get me where he wants me to be. And so is you. Today, maybe there's someone here. You have never repented. Repentance means so asking, being, being sorry day. for your sin, and, we'll see you next week. and then receiving Jesus Christ in your life. And maybe you're here today, and you've never done that wherever you